the thing that we I think that's important that that I and this is what I am on a journey of discovery right now that is is to me really exciting and that is when we forgive or when we are bitter mm. that is going to be seen generations into the future mm. the reason there was a genocide in Rwanda was because this this isn't the first genocide. I mean, exactly. this has happened before, and mm. you know the Tutsis get the Hutus, the Hutus get the Tutsis, and it goes back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and over generations. Somewhere, somebody's got to stop and say, "Hey, enough is enough." Mm. Mm. You know, we're not going to live with this bitterness and this anger. Mm. Elliot, I, I read this morning an incredible story, of the, an email that was sent to me that blessed my heart. In in Georgia, mm -hmm. in Savannah, Georgia, there was a slave back during the, the 1700s, late 1700s, mm -hmm. that received the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm. And he began to preach to his fellow slaves mm. uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as he preached, many became Christians. Many came to know the Lord. Mm. And so some of the slave owners were angry mm. because they viewed the slaves as lower than, you know, the subhuman, ba basically. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, and you're going to be starting, I mean, you, these people are going to find their dignity and their, you know, mm -hmm. in Christ, and, and you, you, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. And so they took him, threw him in prison. They beat him. They, uh, they I mean, he was persecuted. His body was mm -hmm. beaten, mm -hmm. and he continued preaching. Mm -hmm. And finally, some Christian slave owners mm -hmm. came and I know that some people and especially in the black community they say, Well that's how can you have that Oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. But but they were and they, they saw, hey, wait a minute, no. Mm -hmm. you, you you guys are wrong. Mm -hmm. And 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 boy, the word of God spread mm -hmm. in in Georgia, mm -hmm. in the African American community, and today one of the reasons you have so many black Baptist churches mm -hmm. is because of this one What's guy that? who refused to become bitter. Mm. Wow. But he he loved he he had found the grace of God and he yeah. wanted his people to know that grace. Yeah. And today you have churches all in Georgia that trace their history back to this man. I mean, yeah. It was an incredible, yeah. incredible story. And and that just goes back to the Bible, back to Joseph. I mean, Joseph. Just think if he would have held a grudge, if he would have been bitter, you know what that would have done to his brothers, to his fathers, and the whole nation mm. of Israel. If he'd have held a grudge, if he'd have been bitter. No, he didn't do that. He looked for the sovereignty of God and all that. Yeah. You know, they meant it for evil, yeah. but, but God, God meant, meant it for good. good. Yeah. Yes. You know, and I think we just had to come to that place, Sammy, when we can say, you know, you know, for our failures or whatever we do, you know, whatever we go through, we had to look for God in all this, you know, mm -hmm. and say, God, what are you doing in this? Are you expanding my character in all of this? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to get me to see? How can I focus on you and whatever I'm going through? Mm -hmm. And we go through for a reason. We not just happen. God's not just haphazardly running this wor world, nor is our life haphazardly on its course of his own. But if we're seeking God in all that we do, if we're seeking first him, then he's mm -hmm. directing our paths and, and he's going to acknowledge, you know, whatever way we should go. And, and, uh, and he's building character in us. That's yeah. right. And it, character that, that character is going to affect future generations. Yes. I mean, it's going to be incredibly wonderful. Uh, and, and you guys know that I've been, you know, discovered my heritage, Redbone, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is a derogatory term used for some people, and I don't use it in that way. Uh, I, I am one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But uh, it, it's, it's basically in central Louisiana, there were the, in, in the late 1700s, early 1800s, there's a migration of this mixed race of Indian mm -hmm. English that came down there and settled in central Louisiana. And there was a guy by the name of Joseph Willis. And he was born of an Indian slave. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the slave owner uh, had a relationship with, with the Indian slave and evidently really loved her, didn't, didn't ever marry, had any other children. But anyway, this child was born called Joseph Willis. Mm -hmm. and, and Joseph became a Christian. Mm -hmm and loved Jesus and, and, and followed Jesus. And he went down, left North Carolina, went down to the, through uh, Indian Territory into uh, Louisiana. Mm. And he found people just like him of this mixed race. Mm. And he started preaching the gospel. Uh, who had, these are people who had migrated. Some of them were my, my grandparents, mm -hmm. my people, and, 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 and preached the gospel to them. Mm. And they came to know Christ. And uh, so as a result, he went back to the Mississippi uh, Baptist convention there, or the Baptists that were had started, and said, "You want to start a church?" And the first thing they said was, "They said, well, I don't know if we can do this. You're not white." 
<laughs> <laughs> and so uh, at first they didn't allow it. But you know what? He didn't get bitter. Mm. He didn't get. You know what he did? He went back and ministered to them. They yes. would. He had a church, whether they let him have a church or not. Yeah, right, but he yeah. didn't. He didn't act out of bitterness. Yes. He went and ministered to them. He did what God had given him to do. And and then then I think it was eighteen twelve. Mm. They ordained him mm. so that he could start this church. So he started this church, Calvary Baptist Church in Bayou Chico, mm. Louisiana. Wow. I went and saw it. This little place. And 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 my grandparents back. You know, several generations gave the first land wow. for the, wow. and they were this mixed race. Wow. And, and you find then all of a sudden they start planting churches mm -hmm. among, the, uh, among the pure blacks, mm -hmm. among the mixed race, among the whites, mm -hmm. and they start planting church. And they started an association. Today the Louisiana Baptist Convention, wow. which has over 600,000 members, <laughs> is a result of that. Now, all because, and you go back to this guy, Joseph Willis, who didn't get bitter mm. because at first they wouldn't let him. He and you know what? Here's Sammy Tippett. Yeah. There you go. Sis. Generations down the line. Generations down the yes. line. Here we are. We got a broadcast all over the Amen. world. Mm. You know, there's no doubt in my mind that that some of your your people were oh, were slaves and mistreated horribly. Right. And here you here sit. I sit. Mm. Here you sit. You know, that's the sovereignty of that God. That is the sovereignty. You know, of God. and. Uh, it, it seems as though we have two issues here that we've been dealing with. You know, there's the forgiveness that we all uh, receive as a result of the failures that we have in our life. And there's also the forgiveness that we extend to other people as a result of what they have done to us. And, it, and all the people that we've been talking about seem like they have one common thread, that when persecution or mistreatment or something that I would need to owe forgiveness comes, um, they follow what Jesus did. Stand up for what is right, but also recognizing that as I stand up for what is right, people are still going to persecute me, and I may not be able to do anything about that. And I think about Jesus as he stood before the Sanhedrin and he stood before those courts. Mm. He knew that there was nothing that he was going to say that was going to change their mind. And so what did he do? He just uh, uh, adopted an attitude of humility and forgiveness and let them do whatever he wanted to them. The man that, that uh, the slave that you read about this morning, Joseph Willis, Joseph from the Bible, mm. all those men have those, those things in common that as I, as I shrink back and I just let God be my defender, mm. then, and I forgive people freely, then those are the people who seem to leave marks on the generations to come. Yeah, and, and you know what? There, there are two things. One is the grace that we have in us That's right. that enables us to forgive. The other thing is when you think about the sovereignty of God, we know we've already read the final chapter. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And we know who's on so the winning side, side, and we know justice is coming. Yeah, and uh, and so, exactly. so, so we, we know. Now, that's a whole, and you know what, guys, we just opened up a whole can of things <laughs> to, to talk about, and we're going to continue this discussion mm -hmm. on forgiveness next mm -hmm. week because I think there's lots more that yes, we need to is. talk about. We've been talking about our forgiveness, and we just started really getting into forgiving others. Absolutely. So next week we're going to talk about that, and so you need to be back. I mean, uh, uh, hey, anything's open for discussion. That's if right. you want to uh, ask a question, got a comment, and uh, you write us and, and, and give us your comments, your questions, we'd love to hear from you. And, um, man, we just pray that you know the grace and the Amen. forgiveness right. of Jesus Amen. and that you experience that. He loves you. He loves you. You are important to him. And when you experience his love, you have the ability to do what's right, mm. and at the same time to forgive those who've done what's wrong. Yes. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you next week.